Before there were Webkins or Club Penguin, kids of the 80s and 90s were the parents to a whole other realm of pets. Yes, there were ant farms or boardwalk bought hermit crabs that we all just had to have, but we couldn't possibly forget about the infamous sea monkeys. I can't be the only one who grew up confused trying to figure out what exactly this toy pet hybrid really was. Let's swim into the teeny tiny details of the sea monkey empire. But before we start monkeying around with this little science lesson, let's rewind, hit that follow button, and maybe even throw us a like while you're at it. Okay, now that that's done, let's get growing. I can distinctly remember the moments in my childhood strolling down the aisles of Target or Walmart with my mom, seeing these shiny packets hanging from hooks with big bold letters, a toy that comes to life, raise a family of sea monkeys. Like any curious child, my first thought was, what the heck is in that bag? As a knowledgeable, yet still curious, 20-something year old, I decided it was time to dive into the sea monkey kingdom and do a bit more research. Okay, so it's been 24 hours, I waited a whole day, and now we're on to step two, which is dumping my sea monkey packet into their new home. So let's do that. So as you might be able to tell, it's very much like table salt or powdered sugar. There's like a couple chunks and things, but it's pretty fine. They don't look anything like eggs, but we'll see what happens. And we're just gonna let them sprinkle them all in there. Wow, there's a lot of them. Oh, that's super interesting. There's little blue specks. You can kind of see them floating around in the water. And basically now what we do is we just wait. First and foremost, let's begin this journey with a bit of a science slash history lesson. Where did this idea for sea monkeys even come from? Well, back in 1957, a man named Harold von Braunhut, clearly with a name like that, you're bound to be king of the sea monkeys, became fascinated with a species of brine shrimp that were commonly sold as a source of pet food. Known as Artemia salina, this particular species thrives in salt lakes or salt flats. With the evaporation of water in these areas, the tiny shrimp are left with nothing but a high sodium diet to survive, causing them to move into a state of suspended animation. In a process known as cryptobiosis, the shrimp are encased in a cyst-like protective coating, basically a dehydrated shell. And when water is added to this shell, the shrimp could be revived. The sea monkey saga continues. We are on to step three. It's been five days. I let my sea monkeys chill in their water in the north facing window. And today we're actually going to feed them their first round of food. This is what it looks like. You can kind of see them swimming around in there. If you look really close, there's a bunch swimming right around here. They're super, super tiny. So you definitely have to look for them. I was a little bit nervous that they weren't hatching yet, but on day three, I kind of started to see some movement and you can see them, they're, they're pretty much thriving right now, but we're gonna use the food and we're gonna put it in this little spoon. There's a tiny little indentation on the edge of the spoon What that I'm going to fill with their food and put it in the water. As you can kind of tell, the water got a little bit discolored. There's some yellow going on down here. I'm not really sure exactly what that is, but the water level also did go down. Eager to make a little bang for his buck with this new discovery, Von Braunhut, okay, let's just call him Harold, figured out a way to mix nutrients with average tap water, thus creating an elixir of life for these dried brine shrimp. This process would allow for people to take home the shrimp and essentially grow them on their own. During the product's 1960s debut, Harold was selling these kits for only 49 cents a pop. Under the name Instant Life, each set of supplies included a packet of shrimp and a packet of nutrients for them to eat and grow. All you had to do was provide a tank or a living space and fill it with water. Marketing this life in a bag as a bowl full of happiness, Harold found great success in his brine gold mine. He worked out of his self-made factory, aka his barn, to assemble orders and try to find retailers willing to pick up his idea to sell. When he was essentially denied from all the big box toy guys at the time, he took matters into his own hands. Rather than opt for the expensive and flashy television commercials others had been using, Harold went straight to the eyes of his juvenile target market. He took out numerous ads in comic books, and to make money making even easier, all kids had to do was send in the cash to the address in the ad, and their sea monkeys would show up at their doorstep. 
To further advertise the potential of his glorified pet food, Harold hired sea monkey artists to help him illustrate the many possible roles that these guys had to their owners. His team of talented illustrators depicted the sea monkeys as magical beings, little monkeys with fish-like bodies and crown-like heads. He also depicted them performing all kinds of unique talents and skills, like playing baseball and getting hypnotized. And actually, Harold wasn't the only one embellishing the feats of these little swimmers. Believe it or not, Robert Ripley joined in on this whole fad and added a Ripley spin, of course. Not only could you grow your own sea monkeys in their very own sea circus aquarium, but you could also opt for growing your own living monsters. But the not-so-magical part of Harold's living toy that kids were quickly discovering is just how short of a lifespan their new sea monkey family actually had. But don't worry, he had a solution for that too. Harold set out to create a brand new hybrid of the brine shrimp known as Super Sea Monkeys. Harold recruited the help of microcrustacean expert and marine biologist Anthony D'Agostino to take his current revival process to the next level. The two created a new, more durable species of shrimp, Artemia nios. Forget a few days, now your sea monkeys were set for life. I use the term life rather loosely. There's no real scientific evidence behind this new hybrid living much longer or growing much larger than the original species of brine shrimp that Harold started with. Let's talk a little more about that magic elixir of life I mentioned earlier. What exactly is it and how do sea monkeys really grow? When you snatch a packet of sea monkeys off the shelf, or you know, Amazon Prime these babies like I did, you'll discover a few different pouches inside. One pouch, which seemingly looks like powder, is actually your lifeless colony of sea monkeys. You'll pour this pouch into the water to start their new life. Over the next few days and weeks, you'll add your other pouches, the monkey's diet, yeast and spirulina to the water as well. Slowly, you'll start to see these little guys sprout and mature. They start life with one little eye, but pop out with two additional eyes upon reaching maturity. They're also quite see-through and actually use their feet to breathe. Oh, and they're capable of both sexual and asexual reproduction, which means regardless of how many males or females you have in there, expect your sea monkey family to grow. Okay, my friends, it has been three whole months since we started our sea monkey journey. Started in June, it's now September, and there's good news and bad news. Bad news is not all of our sea monkeys were fighters and not all of them have made it this three months. But the good news is there were about five that have made it. There were actually four and then somewhere in the middle, one just sprouted up. So I guess I kind of activated it at a, a different time than all the others. But now it's swimming around in there with all of its brothers and sisters, I guess. Um, so they are fully grown. A couple of them seem to have little pouches on their back. I'm not sure if this is species or if it's babies. So maybe we'll have more sea monkeys sprouting up. I need to do some more research on how long it takes for them to reproduce. And that's it on our journey with our sea monkey family. Well folks, there you have it. Not only did we solve the mystery of what exactly sea monkeys are, but we grew our very own family of these toy pet hybrids in true 80s and 90s fashion. If you enjoyed swimming back in time to the age of the sea monkeys, be sure to follow along with more nostalgic topics just like this one. I'm Steph D'Astasio and I'll catch you again next time for another episode of Ripley's Rewind.